Very, uh, very, 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 very good morning. <laughs> well, first and foremost, um, we glory to God. We give glory to Him for another wonderful Sunday that we all come together to worship Him in spirit and in truth to all those that are in our Zoom. A blessed good morning to everybody. And to our visitor, Mark, we, we thank you for coming and we welcome you. And uh, in relation to our lesson this morning and as a, what was read a while ago in our scripture reading, okay, let us sing another song. Unto thee, O Lord. Everybody knows this song, familiar song. Unto thee, O Lord. All right, so let's sing this song. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Yeah, let none that way. On thee be ashamed. Yeah, let none that way. On thee be ashamed, oh my God, I trust in thee, let me not be ashamed, let not my enemies triumph over me, show me thy way, thy way so Lord. Teach me thy paths, thy paths, O Lord, O my God, I trust in thee, let me not be ashamed, let not my enemies triumph over me, remember now. The sins of my youth, remember now. The sins of my youth, oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, let not my enemies triumph over me all right praise the lord praise the lord amen psalm 25 4 and 5 show me your ways O lord teach me your paths lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the god of my salvation on you i wait all day hallelujah now this morning my dear brethren and friends we will talk about this David's prayer in connection uh, with his sins. You know, when he said this, uh, he was pleading to God because of his sins. And we will try to learn from uh, these words, this prayer of David. Now, Psalm 25 is a humble prayer of David, a humble plea of David uh, to God to transform a sinful man into a righteous man. So uh, this morning we will talk about our need to be holy in regards to these verses. And um, we, will, we will be discussing three words this morning about holiness. Okay. And um, let me start off by, you know, every year, every year before the end or the year ends, many people would list down their to-do list right and they would list down their 
New Year's resolution or what I want to be in my life list this coming year. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the year ends with little accomplishment or none at all. And sometimes uh, life becomes even worse. So we struggle and we fail in life simply because in general, we are not properly equipped. We are not properly equipped to achieve the goals that we set forth. Um, and we are not focused. Our minds are not focused into it. Now, today it is my prayer that these three words that we will be talking about, that I'll be sharing with you, will equip us to live a righteous life that will lead us to holiness. So our topic for this morning, the way to holiness. Now, Einstein once said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Now, we are doing things over and over again, um, either because, number one, we don't know how to do it differently. So that's why we do it the same way over and over again. Or number two, we are afraid of change. So that's why we do the same things over and over again. But according to Einstein, do not expect different results if you do the same things over and over again without affecting any change. Now, maybe it's time to change our ways and see different results. Now, let us take the path that David took, you know, for him to get back on track with God. Remember, Psalm 25 is a prayer of David, prayer for a plea uh, to God because of his sins. Now, Psalm 25 is an appeal for forgiveness. It was an appeal of David for guidance from the Lord. Now, a similar appeal like this of David was made by Moses during his time when, when, they were, when the Israelites were at Sinai. Now, we could read that. Uh, we can read that in Exodus chapter 33, verse 13. Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, in your sight, show me. Show me now your way, that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. The Lord called the Israelites when, when, when Moses said this prayer, stiff-necked. They were stiff-necked people because of their rebellious hearts. And Moses was afraid that the Lord would abandon them. So he prayed to God. Now, the first thing I want to discuss to all of us is the word show. Now, show, it is used in Hebrew, meaning to know. Moses, David, prayed, show us, O Lord. Okay. Now, for us to be victorious in life, we must seek to know the ways of God. And what God wants us or wants us to do and whatever God wants in your life. So we pray to God, show us. Let's go back again to Psalm 25 verse 4. Show me your ways. Now, David said this prayer before God because he found himself guilty of, uh, of sins, guilty of adultery with Bathsheba, guilty of murder with Uriah. So he was overwhelmed of his guilt. He was in deep despair because of this sins from the Lord. Now, David wanted to redeem himself back to God. So he prayed, Lord, show me. Okay. Now, the same meaning of the word show, to know, when, when Moses prayed to God to show him his way, Moses wanted to know the way of God in Exodus, the, the verse that we read a while ago. So David, both David and Moses asked God to show, show them his ways. Show me. Show me. It means that God has a specific manner of doing things that we must follow. Okay. So 
that's basically the meaning of the word show me. The purpose of Moses and David praying to God to show me was because they were in a sinful situation. David was overwhelmed with his sins and Moses, the, re the, re the, the rebellious heart of the Israelites. So they prayed to God to show me. And they wanted to be out of that mud and be at peace with God. So they wanted to be in a better place because they are in, in a worse place. So they wanted to be in a better place and they wanted to be reconciled with God. So they prayed to God, Lord, show me. Now, when we ask God to show us, to show me, our hearts and our minds, we must be ready to follow God. We must be ready to be obedient to God. And our earnest prayer to God to show me will lead us where? It will lead us to holiness. It will lead you to holiness. Now, one specific manner in which all children of God must live and behave is to be holy. This should be our way of living. If we want to be pleasing to God, and if we want to, uh, to be reconciled with God, God's way calls for holiness. In Romans chapter 6, verse 13, now the word, let me just first go for the word holy. Holy means hagios, to set apart for God, sacred, to be different from the world. In Romans 6, 13, it embodies the, the term uh, hagios or holy. Do not present the parts of your body to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. So the concept of the word holy is hereby illustrated. Now, if you will notice twice, the word present was mentioned. Present yourselves to God, present the parts of your body. It means setting apart ourselves for God, to be sacred. Okay. And for what purpose? Why are we setting apart ourselves to God and for God? What is the very purpose? Now, the very purpose is right there in Romans 6.13, righteousness. That is the very purpose why we separate ourselves for God. Why we should be holy is because of righteousness sake. Now, holiness, it calls for righteousness. Okay? So holiness, it calls for righteousness. Now, as we have, uh, I have showed a while ago, another meaning of the word holy is to be different. Okay? To be different. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable, perfect will of God. The words, do not be conformed, means to be different. And again, that's the other term for holiness, to be holy, to be different from the world, from what is worldly. Okay. We must separate ourselves from the world, from what is worldly. Now, we do this by the renewing of our mind, by focusing our mind on what is godly. When we do this, we, trans we transform ourselves to that of the ways of God. So therefore, holiness calls for real transformation. Holiness, righteousness, and holiness calls for real transformation. Now, show us your ways, O Lord, is following, therefore, the standard, the standard of living and behavior according to God. Now, which all of us must follow, and that means putting off our former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the sinful lust, and be renewed in the spirit 
of mine, and that we put on a new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 and 23. The second word that I want to discuss with you is the word teach. Psalm 25, verse 4 again, show me your ways, O Lord, teach me, teach me your paths. Now, the word teach, as used in Hebrew, meaning to exercise in, to involve yourself in, or to learn. Now, the idea behind the word teach is providing instructions or providing know-hows to be followed, to exercise in, to involve ourselves at. So that is the essence, that is the word teach. Now we must first understand what the value of the word teach or teaching is. We must understand it, the, the value of it. In teaching, there are actually uh, to involve. In the process of teaching the teacher the one who always do the talking and the students the one who always do the listening okay so they're always to involve now the basic objective of teaching is to help students acquire knowledge skills and values that will enable them to achieve their goals so this is the general the basic objective of teaching. Now, I want you to remember, when we were born into this world, we were ignorant, right? We were ignorant. I don't know if, uh, if somebody here was born who already knows one plus one equals two. Raise your hand. When you were born, yeah, 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 one plus one. Nobody, nobody, nobody. You know, we all need to be taught, right? And we were even taught how to walk. So teaching is very much important. So through teaching, we become what we want to be in life. So we see the value in the word teach, in the word teaching. So when we ask God to teach us, you know, what we want to achieve, the end result is actually, again, holiness. When we pray to God, when David prayed to God, teach me. Teach me. Why? Because he was sinful. He saw himself sinful because of the things that he did. So therefore, from being sinful, he wanted to be, again, at the right track with God, to be righteous. So he, he asked God, teach me. He wanted to be, again, back to holiness. So the end result, when we ask God to teach us, is, again, holiness. Now, let me show you why I said that. In Luke chapter 6, verse 40, it tells us, Students are not greater than their teacher. Okay? But the student who is fully trained will become like the teacher. So the principle behind this verse is through imparting knowledge, through teaching. The once a student okay, will now soon become like the teacher himself. So that is the basic premise of teaching. The student will, will become a teacher. Now, I heard somebody said that if you want to be the best in your, in your field, try to learn from the top five individuals you look up to. And he did just that. He did just that. The Bible tells us the principle that do not learn from a blind man. Why? You will both fail. 
fall into a pit. So you learn from somebody else that are more knowledgeable than you, like our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you want to be godly and live a righteous life, turn to God. Turn to God. And may I ask you, who is our greatest teacher? Jesus. So we turn to Jesus. So we ask, Lord, teach me. God, teach us. And that is why, what, that is the reason why David asked God, teach us, teach me. Okay. Teach us, O Lord, is our call to achieve holiness. But as he who called you is holy, so you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. We can achieve holiness only, only through God's teaching by the scripture. And that's where we achieve holiness. Because all the scripture it's inspired by God. And it is useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong with our lives. And therefore, it corrects us when we are wrong and it teaches us to do what is right. So that is the importance of the scripture. So by humbly allowing God to teach us his words, then we can align ourselves to holiness. The third word that I would like to discuss is the word lead or guide in other translations. Psalm 25 verse 5. David said, lead me in your truth. Okay. Guide me in your truth. Lead, as used in Hebrew, it means to tread or to march forward. That is the meaning of the word lead or guide. You know, it has a military connotation. It has a, the, word, the word comes from comes with a military background, okay? which means going ahead of the troops, okay? leading them into the battle. And that is what is the essence of the word lead or guide. It also has the idea of bringing someone into having an actual experience, like a hands-on experience. For example, for example, <laughs> um, in making cake, I saw Sister Gloria sitting right there. And I remember uh, Sister Ruby, I know they're watching the Coopers, they're watching right now via Zoom. You know, Sister Gloria and Sister Ruby, uh, they bake delicious cakes. And I am a fan. You know, really, really, they make delicious cakes, you know. Now, even if they give us the recipe and the process on how to make them, we might not get the same results as they do, right? Now, the best way for them to, to teach us is, would be to lead us via hands-on, right? Not, not only just, oh, here's the recipe, brother Mike, and this is the process, you do it yourself. No. The best way to teach us, do a, do a hands-on training, right? They will, <coughs> they will uh, guide us on how to do step-by-step -step the process in making the delicious cake. And this is the other essence of what lead means, what guide means. <coughs> Excuse me. Right? Now, our prayer to God to lead us is a call for God to bring us to point A to point B. Now we want God to bring us somewhere better, as I have said a while ago. Now if we feel that we are now in a better situation, you won't be praying to God to lead me, O Lord. No, because you feel comfortable you feel better, you feel secured. But 
When you feel otherwise, you will pray to God, Lord, lead me. Lead me. Just like David, when he asked God to lead him. Because David was in a place wherein he was tormented. His mind was tormented by the sins he did. So he asked the Lord, Lord, lead me. Lead us to where there would be peace. Lead us to where we would be at peace with God. Now, where do you think that God would lead us when we call for him to lead us, O Lord? He will lead us again to holiness. He will lead us to holiness. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. He said, Listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army. For the battle is yours. Not yours, but God's. In verse 17, But you will not even need to fight. Take your positions. Then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. So what is happening here? What is happening in, in these verses? The Spirit of the Lord told King Jehoshaphat that he did not to be afraid nor discouraged. He needs only to be still. He needs only to be still and watch God's Gave them the victory. For God is with them. Now this means that God is leading them to victory. God was with them. God was guiding them towards victory. Now we ask God to lead us because we know that God would lead us <coughs> to victory. We ask God to guide us because we know that when God is with us, Victory is assured. Amen. That's why I always say, you don't need to go, or you don't need to know where you are going if you know whom you are following. If you know that you are following the Lord, you don't need to ask God, Lord, where are we going? No. Because you know that God will lead you to where? God will lead you to victory. God will lead you to holiness. He will not lead you to somewhere that good. He will always lead us to victory. Amen to that. In Psalm 23 verse 2, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still <clears throat> waters. Now this is a picture of true happiness. Peace. When God leads you, there is what? There is safety. There is satisfaction. There is peace of mind. You know, imagine yourself. Imagine yourself in Psalm 23 verse 2. Imagine yourself in the meadow. You know, with the cool breeze of, the, of fresh air. And you can hear, you know, the, the lashing sound of a nearby streams and the birds chirping. Very relaxing, isn't it? Very relaxing. And, and that is how David pictured God. Being the, being the great shepherd that he is. You know, when you let God lead your life, you will have a relaxing life. You know, God will refresh you. And you will, all those, you will have all those things. When we see him in heaven, right? Now, notice again these things. Let me just go back to our scripture reading very quickly. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. Now, do you see those things? Your, the word your. The way to holiness is all about God. Your ways. He said, your paths. 
your truth. Not our paths, not our ways, and not our truths. It is his ways, his paths, and his truth. It is not about our, not about our ways because our ways get us into trouble. <clears throat> not about our paths because we are always lost traversing our own paths. And not our truth because our truth enslave us. The Bible tells us there, that there is no other way to holiness than in Jesus. Remember that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. And he is the path to life. That's why he is the life. In John chapter 14. right? Now holiness can only be achieved when we humble ourselves before God and earnestly, earnestly pray to God to show us, to teach us, and to lead us. I want to encourage everybody. Let God show us the way, how we must conduct ourselves according to his ways. Let us not seek, you know, anyone else to show us the way because there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. Let us earnestly pray to God to, to lead us, to, to lead us and to, to, to teach us to teach us his paths through the scripture and not to any man-made doctrine. Let us earnestly pray to God to lead us, lead us in all his truths. For we know our truths are relative, but his truths are absolute and it set us free. Amen to that. I pray that those, all of us, who have accepted the Lord would pray this prayer of David earnestly Lord show me Lord teach me and Lord lead me by only this prayer by only living in these principles by God showing us his ways by God teaching us his paths by God leading us the truth we can only achieve holiness. And I pray for those who have not yet accepted the Lord to see the need for holiness. I want you to see your need for holiness. Let God show you. Let God teach you. And let God lead you to holiness. May I encourage you to come forward. May I encourage you to openly declare your acceptance to the Lord by repenting your sins and be baptized into Christ. And brethren, let us continue to live and strive for holiness, for without it, we won't see God. And let me leave all of us with Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Work at living in peace with everyone, and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. The gospel is yours, my dear brethren and friends. And again, let us God show us, let us God teach us, and let us God lead us into all holiness. May God bless you all. Shall we stand as we sing the song of invitation? Good morning. <laughs>